It's the biggest, most prestigious, most hard-fought championship in this genre of racing. And it's about to kick off live for 2016 right now. I got money, I got fame, I mean, I got everything I wanted. And ultimately, what I really want is to win another race. That's all I care You're about. You're looking at a rookie versus a two-time champion with 45 wins under the stone. And just like that, the two-time champ is on the ground, and Watson squirts away. I am James Stewart. I'm not just a one-hit wonder. Oh, problems for James Stewart. Something is not right with the Yoshimura Suzuki. Definitely the journey's not over for me. I think uh, the journey is about to start beginning again. I kind of grew up as a loner. You know, I'd go to school, come home, you know, do my homework and watch motorcycle tapes. You know, it's kind of made me who I am today, so, you know, I don't regret it. To be, like, really good, you gotta be able to study your craft. And, like, in person, I still am in love with racing. So, for me, it, it helps me kind of see where I can get better at. And it's nice to have my mom film in. So every day after each ride, we'll review it. And then normally I'll take it home and dissect it. I was four years old when I first got my first real bike. You know, my dad had it all wrapped up in the back. And I remember coming outside and, you know, seeing this, you know, Yamaha PW50 and nothing, nothing special. But, you know, I just kind of want to be like my dad. When him just, you know, ride motorcycles, you know, he was, he was my hero. So, you know, I wanted to follow him. You know, I brought James home from the hospital. I never took him in the house. I gave him a ride on the motorcycle from the beginning. And that's kind of where it all took place. He was never afraid, didn't cry. So it was in his gene right off the bat. It's only supposed to be like two degrees this weekend. I got that, Rob. Dad taught me how to, you know, where the gears were in the clutch, and I'm really a natural, not student taught nothing.
I, I grew up in kind of the ghetto, so riding motorcycles really wasn't that cool back then, so I really never had a lot of friends. My mom, she worked at a Shell gas station, and my dad worked at Coca-Cola as a factory worker. Well, we used to go to Day City Raceway, you know, I saw a local track there in Day City, Florida. You know, they run a full lap race. When we first started, we get two. Then we finally got three and a half full laps, and it's like, man, we on to it. You know, we're doing good. And you know, he used to come off the track and cry. I said, why are you crying? He said, I can't catch that guy. I said, well, you just gotta keep practicing, keep working at it, you will. When I started winning, uh, that's when he, he retired and kind of put his focus on me, because we was poor, so we both couldn't afford to race. At the end of the month, you know, we used to take, you know, my bills and stuff, me and my wife, we sit down together, we put them all in a hat, and whatever I pulled out got paid that month, and the rest had to wait. Once you got that, that first win, it was like, okay, I got that and got that one out of the way, now I want more. He kept putting more pressure on himself to win, more and more and more, and it's like he couldn't win enough. And when he didn't win, if something happened, it's like it was the end of the world, he couldn't figure out why. Full stride yet. When he's 18 and 19 to 20, this kid's gonna be ridiculous fast. Your winner in the 125 main, James Bubba Stewart Jr. James Stewart wins in a home one. Record five for James Stewart, back-to-back -back wins for the Kawasaki Rider. James Stewart's dream from when he was a little boy is complete. He is the champion, and nobody can take that away from him. It was like a release off of us, and I feel, okay, we made it. Now to make it to the top, you gotta continue. There was like three or four years there that like, I just won so many races that I never like enjoyed it. My whole life was based on what happened on Saturdays, and uh, at that time, I was I was in it. Like you know, I didn't really see much else. That undefeated season was probably like one of the most unhappy seasons I ever had, like racing. But on the outside looking in, I was smoking everybody. I was winning every race. History has been made here at Steel City. A perfect 24 motos and 24 wins. 2009, when I won that Supercross title, that was a very stressful year because I just remember having to work my ass off. The first race I DNF. <laughs> seven races just to get a three-point lead. He's going for his seventh in a row, going for his second championship. Can you think of an athlete in any other sport who's racking up the numbers like this man? His 32nd AMA career Supercross victory. James Stewart takes sole possession. James Stewart, he will do it. He will win his second Monster Energy AMA Supercross and FIF World Championship. That's the one thing that's hard about being, you know, a top athlete who's winning a lot and, and you know being dominant that you know you prepare yourself to always make a win. You're looking at a rookie versus a two-time champion with 45 wins under his belt. Stewart has the oh, Stewart loses it and just like that, the two-time champion's on the ground. That's the one thing I, I did realize also was that I am James Stewart. You know, like I'm not just a one hit wonder. Watch that gate drop. Main event time in Oakland. Here they come right at you. Oh, well, they take the camera out, but it's oh, Reed gets Reed piled is into. Stewart is in there. Stewart Denari. is limping. He's holding that right leg. Remember, he's got a problem with that knee. His right knee had ligament damage. He is definitely frustrated. You can tell by the body language. Two former champions. That's Barsha that's and down on the outside. Justin Barsha right there. Uh, the news broke. Uh, James Stewart suspended by the FIM. My suspension. That was weird. I would say two years is probably the worst possible penalty that could have come from this. I'm not a cheater. I was never taking like you know, HGH and all that kind of stuff. So I never really believed that it was happening. Like, I'm like, these people are crazy. But then uh, as it kept going on, they stopped answering the phone call and it was saying, oh, we, we lost your paperwork. 
it was kind of like then, and I'm like, wait, this is, something's weird here. Um, I remember the, the people from WADA telling me, it's like, you know, it's almost impossible to fail for something and then get, you know, a TUE for it, which is to be able to use it after you fail for it. So I brought it over to when I went over to Europe and said, hey, here it is. You know, I got a TUE form. I went to your doctors. I went through all these tests. WADA says, you're not cheating. We understand. And then he was like, all right, we don't care. You suspended for 16 months anyway. The biggest thing I come back to, I don't think that the punishment was befitting of the crime. Yeah, yeah, I was taking Adderall. I tried different types and all that, but I started taking Adderall. And like I told him, I was like, well, if you're not going to allow me to take it, then I'm quitting racing because, you know, I'm not going to ruin my life and be a danger to anybody else, you know, to take this medicine. That was the only time in racing that I was so close to quitting. Then so many good things happened with me being suspended. I started enjoying my life. I figure if I go this way, I have more room to pull it. Made a fool out of me. I was just like, he's the cockiest person ever. And he's- I'm surprised he ain't in the car right now. That's what I was about to say. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about, baby. I keep you another hole. It's still rolling down there. We driving, it's still rolling. <laughs> Woo, cat like reflexes, baby. Hey, hey, you, hey, you had the camera on too. Bucket. Ah. Some days I come out here, I can, I can get him. There ain't many of them, but some days when I'm on, I'm on. In order to be great again, I've got to learn to just be positive and, and take small gains and I'll be good again. I started enjoying going to practice and going to the gym and, and going to the race. And I think I enjoy the process of getting back to the top and winning more than I do winning. start embracing like all right let's get back to the top let's figure out how to get back there I mean you look around what all I have I still feel the same way as the first ever race I still care just as much and um, I enjoy it and I still love doing it person out there to push me is me. I'm just a dude who likes riding. I just do it a little different. I am in this industry because I love it and I'm a rider because I love it.